This is Chris Allen of the MMA Fight Bible and John Boy McElroy of Martial Arts Chat Podcast with your weekly MMA Power Hour news update. In the MMA news this week, Darren Till was reportedly fined and ordered to pay reimbursement after a series of alleged incidents last week in Spain. The UFC welterweight fighter was fined more than 700 euros in a Spanish court for allegedly stealing a taxi, trashing a hotel room with four fellow British tourists. Till and his friends were ordered to reimburse the hotel more than 8,500 euros after they allegedly vandalised a room, the report stated. The Pope went on to say five United Kingdom residents appeared in court in Arona in the south of Tenerife on Saturday. They were arrested Thursday. Man, <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't do the uh, the English tourists abroad any you know stereotypical favours. He gets drunk and banged up in the in the Canaries. Good God, Till. The arrest uh, news was first reported over the weekend by Spain's El Dia, and the paper reported that Till and those with him broke furniture, emptied a fire extinguisher at the Costa Adeji Hotel. That's the hotel they were staying in. And after being thrown out of that hotel, the group went to another nearby hotel, uh, but they were refused rooms. At that point, per the report, the five Brits uh, called for a taxi as the driver was looking, uh, sorry, loading the trunk with the luggage. Till and another person allegedly got in the vehicle and drove away where they were intercepted by the National Police. Near the Till Noise teams responded to request for comment. A spokesman for Spain's National Police declined to comment on the matter on Monday, citing policy. It's no secret that Paul Berdu Craig produces some of his best work when he's put in must-win situations, as proven by his most recent last-minute submission over Kennedy at UFC Philadelphia. This is Scott's second late submission, when with the UFC having spectacularly finished another debutant, Magomed and Kalayev, in the last second of the Russians' debut back at UFC London in 2018. I know the big man personally and I was, uh, he was sharing these thoughts and what has now become his trademark. Berger said, I was at a show down in Wales cornering my mate Jordan last week and a few guys came up to me and said, hey, you're that last minute submission guy. Beautiful. There you go. <laughs> That's what is going and going to go on my tombstone, he said, uh, last minute submission guy. If you go back to my earlier career, I was finishing everyone in the first round with submissions, and now I'm just saving it until the last minute. Craig has, went, uh, sorry, Craig has gone into his last few outings as the underdog, but he underlined how he feels that the status brings the best out of him. He said it's probably a negative to think that you're constantly on the back foot, but I kind of like it. I think we were better in that kind of pressure. When everyone believed in me, that's when I took my first career, career loss against Tyson Pedro. Everyone believed me, everyone was writing him off, and that was my biggest downfall, just the self-belief. Craig made headlines after his last second win over Ryan Kalayev when he revealed that he would have retired if the UFC had failed to offer him a new contract after the bout. Considering his comments from last year, Craig again underlined why he feels he should hang up his gloves if his time with the UFC comes to an end. He says, I don't still think like that. I don't know if it's a positive or a negative thing, but every fight that I do well in, I go in with the attitude that it's my last fight. For my first fight in the UFC, I thought I had to perform or I wasn't getting that contract because the UFC are brutal. They want the best of the best. If I didn't put on a performance, the UFC wouldn't have kept me. It's as simple as that. And when it came to Ankalaev fight, it was the same thing. If I didn't win, I knew for a fact I was out. It was the same again when I was coming off the loss to Crut. It was the first fight of my new contract, so I wasn't worried about it against Crew. But then when I went to my next fight, the second fight of my contract, and there was another guy, another undefeated contender series guy, there was a good chance I could get cut. I don't see the point in taking massive amounts of damage in other, other organisations for nothing but money. And although he hasn't got his next date set, Craig outlined his hopes for being matched with the legendary light heavyweight Mauricio Shogun Hua. He says, I see these legends like Shogun, I would love to fight him, I really would. Those sort of guys that are coming to the end of their careers, I could probably piggyback off them and it'd be a good fight. By the end of this year, I want to be in the top 10. I want another two f- fights to finish out this contract and hopefully start 2020 in that top 10 of the UFC. 
Bellator action returns from nearly a month long hiatus this Saturday with Bellator 220. It takes place at the SAP Center in San Jose, California. Two championship fights top the bill. In the main event, we've got welterweight champion Rory McDonald. He's defending against the legendary John Fitch. And the Coleman event also sees our title fight in the women's flyweight division. Elima Lee McFarlane goes for her third title defense when she meets Vita Ortega. McDonald returns to the welterweight division after a one stint at middleweight where he unsuccessfully challenged for the welterweight title against Gegard Musasi. McDonald is 2-3 in his past five fights dating back to July 2015. Fitch now 41 can become the oldest champion in Bellator history and he becomes the first in MMA history to fight for the titles in Bellator, UFC and for World Series of Fighting. Said to be a cracking night of fights for sure, it'll also feature the likes of Ben Henderson, Liam McGeary and Phil Mr. Wonderful Davis. Last weekend, the UFC made their trip overseas, flying all the way over to the mainland of Russia, where a main event was headlined by the big, big name Alistair Overeem taking on Alexei Olenek, who was a last minute standing due to Overeem's previous opponent being injured. Alistair Overeem did what he did best, got the Muay Thai glitch on Olenek and landed some brutal knees, eventually finishing the master of the Ezekiel choke, Alexei Olenek. So Overeem's got another name to add to his ever growing list of amazing fights that he's fought going all through the years and it's really a shame that we don't hear more people talking about Alistair Overeem potentially being one of the greatest heavyweights of all time going on his long last career with the opponents that he's defeated and with his resume stating massive names such as beating Vito Belfort twice Mark Hunt twice he beat Vadum twice Brock Lesnar Frank Mir Stevan Struve Roy Nelson Junior Dos Santos Arlovsky and the, the list goes on he's beat some of the biggest names and even if he hasn't won he's taken on some of the biggest name in some of the top stages in the world and as well as his amazing kickboxing career 20 years of MMA fighting and over 60 fights to his name is a massive achievement in itself so what's next for the demolition man going forward from here at 38 years old probably not got too many fights left in him if we're being honest as much as we want to see him carry his career as long as possible I feel a good run of fights and a few wins might push him to think you know what enough is enough but only time will tell Recently, we sadly were told the news that Rodrigo de Lima, former UFC fighter from Brazil, was tragically killed in a hit and run incident last Sunday. According to the local authorities in the Brazilian city of Belém, de Lima argued with the driver of the vehicle that he was currently a passenger in. So de Lima exited the vehicle and eyewitnesses have said the driver allegedly ran over and killed the 26 year old. Police are currently searching for the suspect but no one has been arrested at this time. De Lima was with a fellow UFC fighter and fellow friend Michael Prezares, apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly, and he was with him at the time and confirmed the father of two had died sadly at the scene. Delima had a short-lived career in the UFC, only fighting twice, losing both bouts to tough, tough opponents such as Neil Magny and Efrain Escudero. So nothing really to be ashamed of there taking on such high level opponents at that time in their career. Just under a year ago um, in June 2018 he did actually compete in an MMA fight at the Shooto Brazil 85 where he submitted Luis Fabiano in the co-main event. There have been various statements that have come out about this but at the end of the day it seems to be De Lima had some sort of argument with the driver in a car. He got out the vehicle and in some sort of moment of madness the driver hit De Lima with the car killing him on the scene and and tragically, Delima was married with two children as well. So our thoughts and prayers go out to them. And we wish them nothing but the best going forward and hope their privacy is respected. Last week, we sadly heard the news that former UFC strawweight fighter Angela Magana fell into a coma after undergoing a back, op a back operation for lower back pain. But due to complications with the anesthesia, she did not wake up after the surgery was completed and then slipped into a coma. Two days later, she's now woken up fantastic news and shortly after waking up she took to her social network to send a message to all her family and friends who had supported her all the way her message stated hi guys i'm awake i feel very tired like i can barely open my eyes but thank you everybody for thinking about me i feel like i'm a very rich woman because i have a lot of time well look what happened i almost lost my time but to take time to wish someone well what do we do with the time we make money so time's more valuable than money thank you to everybody who took the time to wish me well i'm going to make a full recovery the problem was just the anesthesia the disc procedure and the calda aquinas stuff was better than they thought so the surgery was great
great. It was just the anesthesia. I'm going to get better and I'll be fighting again soon. And Combat Americas has been so good to me, so thank you very much. You can see this on her social network Twitter page where she released a full video. And we wish her luck and wish her well in all her recovery and getting back to her fighting ways. Good. The refs have called it. This is Chris Allen and John McElroy with your weekly MMA Power Hour news update. Coming up next is another knockout episode of the MMA Power Hour with Colin and Adam. Until next time, we're tapping out. Can you feel the power? Welcome to the MMA Power Hour. So glad to have you here. We have an amazing show for you here in our brand new studio. I couldn't be more excited, so jump on in. Let's get to it. Uh, I love to uh, bring in my business partner and co-producer and co-host. Let me tell you, this man is amazing. He is far ahead in the race for People Magazine's 2019 World Sexiest Man. So do vote for him. Not only that, but still he, rolling, still yeah, rolling. Oh yeah, wow. but but he he is uh, the man that single-handedly turned off the dark web. So give him that. And recently, <laughs> President Donald Trump said he is probably our country's smartest millennial and most likely a future president. What else can you say? Jump on in here, Dr. Adam Rorta. Wow. I appreciate that introduction. I don't know how true 90% of it is, but uh, hey, <laughs> thank you for pumping me up. Yeah, you did it. It's all, it's all you, man. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I, I, I am also thinking that you may have been partially responsible for creating the internet, although I think you were negative two years old when it happened. But Oh, yeah, I mean, I was thinking about it before you I was were. born. I do think you were. I really do. But, yeah, Dr. Adam Rorta, you look great as always. You've already roared on in here. So, Rorta, I mean, this is, studio is amazing. A big, uh, big thank you to you and our team, man. Uh, would you like to tell uh, tell the audience a little bit about it or tell us a little, about, a little bit about what you've been doing, blah, 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 and, uh, and how how are you doing this week? You look great as always. Well, hey, thanks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, first off, before I get into any of that, I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to uh, Digi South uh, for the studio, uh, really supplying the space, helping get it set up for us and also for other people. Uh, you can utilize Digi South's space, and it's actually um, under in partnership with a few other companies with an umbrella. Uh, this is just to let you all know, with an umbrella company called SoCal Social that, that focuses on all things social media uh, so if you need content creation you need music you need video you need photos any content creation copy editing uh, it, it's all done in-house by at SoCal social Absolutely. Uh, also I want to give a huge shout out to combat press where every fight has a story go to combatpress.com and you can go ahead and get all the best up-to-date no fluff news so, I mean, yes. you've all the, got that. All the news that's fit to print from Combat Press, uh, they are one of the best out there. They're getting bigger and better every year. Uh, Digi South, you know, when your company is crying tears of sadness <laughs> for not being able to have anyone leading your company and create a great SEO or whatever the hell it is, Digi South will provide the umbrella to protect you from the tears <laughs> drowning, you, <laughs> drowning you out of your house. So, how about that? I bet you didn't know that was coming. Did you, Adam? <laughs> no, I didn't. I love it, though. I, I, <laughs> Digi wow. South, our good friends. They're amazing. Hope you guys appreciate it. Well, I tell you, I, I, I definitely want to thank our friends, our good mates uh, for the news. I hope you enjoyed it. They are fantastic. And we're talking about uh, Chris Allen from England and John McElroy from Scotland. And I think you guys are, uh, are, are absolutely on point and uh, you know what you're talking about. And you're great MMA journalists and great fans and great friends of ours. And a big thank you, big respect for you uh, for uh, the work you do and uh, in contributing to our show. Those guys are amazing, aren't they, Adam? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they, they really are. are there, there's so much stuff behind the scenes. I, it, there's no real way to explain how much these guys are doing. Um, you know, they're they're offering up uh, everything when it comes to content creation with our show and the news. And it's just amazing to have such great partners 
It is. It really is. And they're over there in the UK. We love our UK fans. With my name, Colin, people aren't quite familiar with it yet, it seems like, in the United States. But in the UK, Colin is not that weird and bizarre a name. I've never actually been to the UK, but I'd love to go there where people wouldn't blink when I say my name is Colin, uh, as they do sometimes here in the United States. Although I guess it's becoming a bit more, uh, more common. But yeah, in the UK and Ireland, uh, a lot of fans and friends we have there big respect and uh, and a lot of fondness that we do have for you guys there so let me see i think we're a matter of a minute uh, a couple minutes away so if you want to get on that doc or uh, have someone uh helping you or, or grab uh, get onto the connection there in the meantime i will say uh, we've got some great fights coming up uh this saturday we're talking about a bellator and a ufc on the same day doesn't usually happen that way uh but uh it looks like that's what we're looking at here so a little bit of a conflict i guess uh hopefully most of you have a dvr and uh and i guess you can make that happen actually with espn plus it's not a dvr anymore it just stays up there if you have the espn plus bellator you can dvr on the paramount network worker if you have the DAZN, zone as they call it, uh, but uh, going to be some really, really great fights. Uh, John Fitch going to be challenging Rory McDonald for that Bellator uh, welterweight championship, and uh, we're behind Fitch 100%. Believe you can do it. Go John Fitch. Make it happen. Next Bellator champion. Um, and uh, interesting fights in the UFC, May 4th, uh, there are going to be some great fights there. And uh, May 4th, uh, we do have past guests of our show fighting. Uh, Juan the Kraken Adams is going to be fighting. Look forward to an amazing knockout uh, or finish from him, as uh, is what he usually does. Um, two past guests are going to be fighting. Also, Macy Chesson, that we've had on a few times, is going to be fighting against Sarah Morris. Um, both really, really nice girls and, uh, and tough girls and uh, Macy is on an undefeated tear is a big favorite in that uh, in that fight Dr. Adam Rorta we are just about ready or you had something you wanted to interject we're good uh, yeah no we've got two minutes we do okay so uh, let me see what else uh, <laughs> can I say um, well a lot of interesting stuff happening you know with uh, with one championship a lot of great fights there uh, I think it's TNT that they're on and you can see a one-hour recap of their events uh, if you have TNT I think everyone does uh, on their uh, cable or satellite network or whatever the heck you have <laughs> uh, and so you can see some great uh, fights there and um, and then uh, you know Invicta's got some great fights coming up what about that great one 45 uh, pound matchup. Megan Anderson has got her hands full with Felicia Spencer. So they're bringing the active Invicta featherweight champion uh, Felicia Spencer over to make her UFC debut against Megan. I wonder what happens if Felicia loses though. Does she keep her Invicta title? I, I, usually it's not the case. Although she was a dominant, uh, well I guess I shouldn't say a dominant champion. I think she had yet to make her first defense. But really it one of the biggest stars over there doc what do you think if they bring felicia over uh to fight megan and she doesn't win do you think they're there that means though that she's got her ufc contract and she no longer will hold her victory i would imagine that's what it that would what it would mean what would you think or do you think by chance they might say hey there was a loner for one fight we're bringing felicia back now to uh resume her uh, tenure as the invicta uh, featherweight champion I don't know. It's tough saying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nah. I would imagine not. I would imagine there really isn't a one-off. Although, you know what? In, in, at featherweight for women, there might be. You know, any other division but featherweight, I would say no. If they're bringing someone to the UFC, it's not just a one-fight contract. They don't really tend to do that. But for featherweight, it really does make you wonder. And you know what? The funny thing is, Megan is also a former uh, in uh, Invicta featherweight champion. Yeah, I was just thinking yeah. that myself. And she didn't lose at all there. She came over what it's been a couple of years now and I think has had just uh, a couple of fights where she fought Holly and she fought uh, why am I drawing a blank? Who the heck else did she fight? Did, 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 has Megan had one fight or two fights at featherweight in the UFC? It was Holly 
And she's had two. She just won her last one. Yes, yeah, she did. That's right. It was the toe in the eye. Yeah, yeah. Toenail in the eye of Kat Zingano. That's right. So that's going to be an interesting fight. I think Megan is six feet tall. In fact, I know she is. And I think Felicia is about five seven, five seven and a half. So a big height and reach advantage for Megan. Uh, but but uh, Felicia is a really rugged, strong woman. So that's going to be a hell of a fight. Anyway, are we? Uh, we're about ready, I think, for the next guest. I think we're maybe a minute minute past so as soon as we can get that rocking here hey, yep absolutely i can Give start doing here that skype then. dance here <laughs> Our... skype dance so much stuff to do over here oh, but anyways I'm, I'm excited to, yep. to hear max after his nice uh victory big victory yes. so yes uh let's see what we can do to pull him in we'll go ahead and do a skype dance here let's rock it oh and it's slow with the skype dance here's a slower <laughs> skype dance. slow motion skype dance <laughs> Uh, you might want to check to see if you. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Max, can you hear me? Hello. Excellent, Max. So, if you can hear me, all we need you to do is hit that video button that looks like a camera or a computer screen with a line going through it and then we will have you on video all right one second not a problem at all my friend and uh in, and we'll we'll give max a chance to do that but in the meantime let me give a proper introduction ladies and gentlemen we're so happy to have back on our show ufc welterweight contender max Payne griffin and as soon as we can get that video, we can start rocking. And uh, but uh, while he's working on that, he's coming off a great uh, victory at uh, UFC 236 against Zelim Imadeev. And we got a oh, we got a oh, we got an icon of something. Let me see he's, here. He's trying. Okay, he's no trying. problem. And so very impressive victory for Max. Very anxious to talk to him and uh, and see what. Uh, well, there we go. There's Max Griffin. Max, welcome to the show officially, my friend. Can you hear me? Oh, now we see Max, but we don't have audio. Max, can you hear me? Uh, Max, we see you now, but something's wrong with your audio. Did you, did you hit mute or something like that? Doc, should we ask him to call us back or what happened? Now all of a sudden I see nothing. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Can you hear me, Max? I can hear you. Fantastic. I really appreciate you coming back to the show. Perfect, man. You look great. How's everything going, man? How do you feel after that great win at UFC 236? <laughs> it's good, man. It's good, man. It's pretty good. I actually just called up. I'm uh, picking up a patio table, so I just got to you all. Are we like this? I heard I heard that you just got to U-Haul. Yeah, we're set to we're set to go about 15, 20 minutes. If you need to make it 15, we can do that. Uh, I hate to 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 make you hold off, yeah. but is that all right? Cool. All right, yeah. I, I appreciate that, man. Well, congratulations on that big win, man. I, as did many people, felt that you also won that fight against Tiago Alves. So if they would have taken this decision from you, man, me and Dr. Adam Rorder were going to go down there and start. <laughs> you know, handing out some punishment to some of those For judges. Sure. Yeah. So no, man, that was a really good fight. That was a really good opponent. I think that he may even have been favored. He's uh, he's among a lot of these amazing Russian fighters, and it seems like nine, like ninety percent of the time those guys win. And I think some of the odds makers thought that's what was going to happen again. But man, I said they don't know Max Payne Griffin. He's determined, <laughs> and and he's got the, the 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 skill and the game plan. But let me ask you were you were you even more determined after having that decision you know kind of stolen from you in that last fight to make sure that you just left it all out in the cage this time definitely you know it, it uh it made me upset you know to have my decision originally against tiago you know just just want to win that much more finish guy that tried to finish this guy he's tough and i know the the russian did have that kind of mystique about them you know um you know khabib and zabi you know what i mean they they're you know they all hang out and um this was supposed to be one of those guys but um, not today buddy nope nope better go somewhere else with that. <laughs> 
Exactly, exactly. I'm with you. Let me ask my producer something here real quick, Max. Uh, Dr. Adam Rorta, do you think we can get a better audio with Max, or do you think this is about as good as we're going to get? Because we're getting kind of good, but not great. So you know what, Max, can you do me this favor? This sometimes helps a lot. The audio is kind of a little bit muffled. Can you hang up and then Skype call us back? Yeah, what time are we going to be on? Yeah, we're on now. We're on now. This is live. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you could Skype call us back because, you know, the, your, the audio was kind of muffled. Yeah, I'll call right back. Sounds good. Appreciate it a lot, my friend. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we are going to have Max Payne Griffin call us right back. Here is uh, Adam Payne Rorta uh, <laughs> on the screen right there, looking sharp as always. And, uh, you know, we're going to we're gonna hopefully get this audio good because I think we were hearing somewhat well, somewhat good, but not so good. And we want to make sure we can hear Max. Okay. There we go. All right. Max Griffin, awesome. Can you hear me, my friend? Can you see me? Yep, I see you, and I think that the, the the audio is a bit better, man. So, yeah. So, what was uh, what was your thought with this opponent? And you are right with with Khabib and Zabit and and a lot of these guys from the Eastern Bloc, man. These guys have an aura about them. They're all hanging out with each other and training together. Not all, but a lot of them are, and they're and they're killing it. And so, you know, this was a very important fight. And and may I ask you, when you have a, a decision that you did lose, that you should have won, but they did not give to you. Did you feel the added pressure on you? I know you wanted this one and you knew how important it was, but did you feel added pressure? And, and if you did, do you, did you use that to fuel your, your, your you know, passion and your focus for the fight? Or do you try not to think about the added pressure that might be on you? I'd be curious to see how, how you, you know, process that and you know, how you like to focus uh, when something like that is the case when a fight's this important. Yeah, no, um, that's a good question. So with the Tiago fight, you know, losing in that kind of way when I did win gave me so much drive to finish it. You know, a decision isn't good enough. It's not, you know. Um, I used to think you could, like, win by decision, you know. Not all the time, but if you did, you, you know, it is what it is. But I found out that you can't win by decision. Yeah, it's too easy to get ripped off by a decision. It really, really yeah. is. It's so a shame. you have to, you know, you have to go balls out, and it's 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 even more than that. Um, but just you have to finish. Yeah. At least try. You know what I mean? It's a lot harder than it seems because these guys are good, especially this guy. Um, he had a really good, uh, really good coach, um, Roberto Flamingo. He, you know, he used to train. Um, for these guys, Alex Overeem, some of those guys at the back Zillions before they broke up with yeah. him and Hoof, you know what I mean? But he's trained some good guys, and this is his guy, so yeah. this was supposed to be, you know? I kind of spoiled his party. I ruined the best day of his life. Yeah, absolutely. But let me ask you, this guy was doing some some something that a lot of the Russians don't do. It almost seems like this guy was kind of talking to you in there and almost like tried trying to act as if your punches or kicks didn't have anything on them. Was he saying anything that made sense? Could, <laughs> could he speak English or what was going on in there? Yeah, you know, Spad, we're, uh, we were kind of, um, yeah, he was talking shit. Can I, uh, yeah. Yeah. is this PG on here? No, what? you can say whatever you want. Say whatever you want. Yeah, um, he, yeah. Um, he was talking a lot of when shit. When I had him in that original cross phase, he was like, you motherfucker. Oh, you motherfucker. Oh, no. Whenever we were grappling, he'd be like, you motherfucker. Oh. Motherfucker. And then I, you know, like halfway through, I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. You say motherfucker. I'd be like, fuck you, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, man. Did you know that that was going to kind of come out of that guy or did that kind of catch you a little bit by surprise? No, I mean, he tried to talk shit. I mean, before the fight, um, he, you know, he approached me, he, he came at me in the restaurant, um, in the morning and, uh, it was a volatile week. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. I've never talked shit really in the fight except, you know, back in, you know, back in the day when nothing, uh, in the last few years, not right. these UFC days. Right. It's kind of odd. I mean, all respect to him for speaking English, but how do you, how does one choose to talk a lot of trash in a language they don't speak that well? <laughs> it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah, no, he knew how to say you talk shit, you talk <laughs> shit. That's all he was saying. That's weird, man. He, he knows a lot more than he, he, he you know, 
people give him credit for. He acts like he doesn't know shit. But right, right. He knows all the bad words. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it seems like that's what everyone learns since we're kids. If we learn some other <laughs> languages, isn't it right? <laughs> the bad words, the, all the stuff that our parents say. No, don't learn that. Yeah, you know, don't yeah, like, yeah. But no, a tough guy, man, definitely. And that was that was a great win, man. That 170 division is packed, man. And I'm so glad that you know they finally gave you what you deserve, which is a victory. And uh, and what are you looking at from here, man? I mean, I don't think every fight is 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 damaging but i don't think you took an extreme amount of damage that you have some serious injuries from that or am i wrong no you're good uh i had a black eye which i wore you kind of call it uh, i had a black eye for a little while which i enjoyed you know? nice yeah absolutely <laughs> You know, get some color once in a while. Yep. But it sounds like it sounds like you could fight this summer if there was a spot for you, right? Yeah, I feel good. I'm already I'm already back at the gym. You know, I'm already doing stuff. Right. Uh, I'm trying to renegotiate my contract though. That's got, cool. Uh, we that got one more in, but we want to negotiate now. We got yeah. some we got some good momentum on our side. It was a big win. Um especially from that Tiago fight, you know. That was a good win. Then we got this one, so we got some momentum. Yep. Uh, Dana White really liked the fight. He mentioned it. Um, yeah, Max Griffin fight. I really liked that fight. That's good. We want we want to be in these fights. And I watched the fight. It was exciting. Yeah. It took me like four days to watch it. But when I did watch it, my my palms were sweaty. About to you know drive it over to my buddy's house, and uh, it was an exciting fight. You know. So, it really was. It was a, it was back and forth, man. It was you know <laughs> one of the things that I got to give you credit for, man, is that you kept a good pace. But you also knew when to breathe. One of the things that one of my jiu-jitsu instructors, uh, former UFC star Paulo Tiago, will frequently yeah. say, right, is breathe, breathe. And so many people don't think about it, but it does make a difference. And it really, you really look like uh, a, a veteran in there when you were making sure to breathe and keep a pace. And and is yeah. that something you always do, or just in that fight, or or you know, that, I was impressed when I kind of saw that that you were like really looking experienced and keeping your composure and keeping your wind, and you know. That's probably something yeah, you train, right? Um, I mean, I've been working on my stuff, so I have been going balls out, and I've been going hard as I can. It was a grueling fight. Some people said, man, you look tired of part of that fight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My arms did get tired after uh, – I almost had that choke in the first round, man. Yeah. Cross face him. I almost had it. With this close, he had a uh, – like an Abe Lincoln chin, so yeah. hella stuck out. He had he had a little protection on there. Yep, yep. But, uh, no, that can you be. You know, my arms were tired, but my legs weren't tired. My legs and my lungs weren't tired. Yeah. You know, but but I burned my arms out a little bit trying to choke him for like yeah. three minutes. Yeah, it's um, tough. But yeah, that cross face, those Russian guys, they I, it almost seems like they like pain. So you put a yeah, cross face, right? You're gonna, you know. I remember this is a funny story, but I remember I had a, a Russian guy come and train with with our uh, our jujitsu class a few years back, and he came really close to popping uh, one of my my buddy's arms with an armbar. And you know, in class, especially we're not professional fighters, you're not supposed to be doing that. So I rolled with him, and I didn't have any bad intentions intentions, but I got him in a cross face, which is something that I do pretty well. And my squeeze yeah. my squeeze is pretty good. And I was squeezing him blood started to pour out of his nose oh, and, and then finally he tapped out but yeah you know for people that don't know you get a good cross face especially you get that arm the other arm on the back in the correct position and you gable yeah. grip it and you squeeze you know you can cause some pain so yeah that guy is a tough guy and then you know yeah, he, he almost tapped man he turned her i almost got him man yeah uh, but yeah no it felt good i feel good in there and i, I want uh it was a tough fight. I mean, like, uh, it took a lot of mental fortitude, a lot of training. I mean, how many people does he knocked out with those spins? Yeah, it yeah. It only had six takedowns. I had more than that. They didn't count those ones where he kind of kind of rolled out of them and got up. He was good to getting up, you know. But uh, I had to shoot, you know, you know, when he turned like that on those spins, because mm -hmm. I've been doing those spins. I mean. I've been doing this since I was a kid. I've been doing those martial arts, spinning hill hooks, yeah. spinning wheel kicks, spinning back kicks. I'm so used to that stuff. So just because I don't do it all the time doesn't mean that I don't know how to defend it. And right. See it coming from a mile away. I, I yeah, I, I intercepted all of those spins. Absolutely. And correct me if I'm wrong. You're training at the lab, right in Arizona, right? No, I'm in Sacramento, man. Oh, that's right. What's what, what what school do you train at out there? I'm at uh, Marinova's kickboxing. I train at MMA Gold. That's out right. Here, um, we got Aspen Lad. 
um, Anthony Hernandez, some people coming out. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Who uh, who helped you out, and who do you want to give some uh, – shout some uh, support out for uh, for helping you out to prepare for this great fight with him? Oh, today? man, it was funny. My buddy Anthony hurt his knee, so he didn't help me out at all this fight. Um, but uh, for sparring partners, I, I got my buddy from um, – where is that? Lodi, he came out. Um, Golden Gloves guy. My buddy, uh, Sinjin Smith, helped out a lot, too. Um, yeah, Sinjin from Reno, he came down a few weekends. It was just, it was a collaborative effort, you know. It was a lot of game planning, knowing what the guy was going to do. Um, a lot of my uh, boxing coach, Norm Tavalero, just keeping me calm and keeping me uh, just sitting down on my punches, being patient, you know. I'm a lot better than a lot of these guys and I'm just not I'm, I'm just so close to just doing whatever I want with these guys yeah yeah um, so every fight gets better and better a little bit closer and now you know it makes sense to wrestling with this guy so now it's like now you know now when I you know get an opponent or they want to you know we you get set up now they're gonna have to worry about the takedown too you know yeah absolutely um, no you're you just seem like you're getting better and better and how old are you now 31 I'm 33. I just look, I look young, you know. No, 33 is still young. That's a good, that's a good yeah. age to be, man. And at 170, seems like a lot of 170s do get to like 38, 40, man. So you got some time left, and this very well could be your athletic peak, uh, you know. So I'm, I'm excited about where you're at. Anyone, anyone on your radar? Uh, anyone you either want to call out, or if you don't want to call out, anyone that you think might be an interesting matchup for you coming up? Um. We'll see. I was looking at like a fight, like like my like maybe like a Carlos Condit kind of fight. Mm -hmm. um, I asked for that actually, um, but they gave me this last guy. Now it's like I just you know I want to fight whoever I need to fight, but I want someone good. Yeah. Um, I put in exciting fights. I put in exciting fights. Fight out, you know, hands down. All my fights have been exciting that I've ever been in. And uh, that's what the people want. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. What do you think about the group of guys that are ranked ahead of you? Anybody that you think uh, if you could pick, you'd love to have a fight with? Not that, you know, you want to call anyone out, but who do you who do you think would be an interesting fight? If you look at the champ, Usman, you look at Ben Askren, you look at Robbie Lawler, you look at uh, George Masvidal, Leon Edwards, of these guys that are ranked There's ahead of you. a lot of good fights. I want to fight Lawler one day. That would be something. That would be something, man. One of these days, you know, I want to, I want to fight these guys that, that are just badass, you know. Yeah, yeah, the absolute legends. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in, uh, in uh, George uh, Jorge Masvidal and Askren? Any prediction on that, man? That should be interesting. That's going to be on that big John Jones. I got Masvidal, man. Yeah. Uh, I think Robbie had him. Robbie had him. Uh, they could easily stop that fight but against it, Askren, right? Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Robbie had that against Askren, man. Yeah. What do you think of the fact that they're putting Robbie up against Tyron Woodley now, man? I I, I know that Woodley got shut down by Usman, but wouldn't a champ? I don't know. A champion to me who's defended four or five times would seem like they would be entitled to a rematch. But you know what? Someone said to me. I don't some, think they like them. Right, and that. <laughs> I don't no, think they like them. No, right. They don't. Yeah, they always. They never seem to love give Tyron the chosen one too much love, which is unfortunate because he's a nice guy. We we had him yeah. on the show and he's a good man but you know you know what someone else said to me they said tyron may not want uzman right away after being shut down like that i don't know my thought would be he probably I mean, would kind of put with your mind like that they yeah like that but... yeah but do you think uh, you think masvidal beats Askren? i think it sounds like you do huh i think he can i think his wrestling defense is good enough yeah and i think he'll just piece Askren up yeah like, Askren has no kind of hands no we saw what he had we saw what he tried to do against Lawler, but Lawler tries to load yeah you know what i mean and these big shots it's easy to wrestle something like that yeah. but i think that's the ball could get in there yeah were you reaching him oh yeah oh yeah were you surprised that uh that masvidal stopped darren tiller did you think that was coming i thought it would be a longer fight um, but I'm not surprised. Yeah. What about and what about what happened between Masvidal and and uh, Leon Edwards? Man, what would happen if you were doing an interview and someone started to talk in the middle of your interview on camera as they were walking by you? I don't know, but I don't know how how you could hit people like that and not get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> the UK just doesn't care. Yeah, you know, but but you know, listen to what Masvidal said. Masvidal said, if you notice, he walked toward Edwards with his hands behind his back at first, and the only reason he threw is that Edwards walked over to him with his hands up. Now, may I ask you, as a high-level professional fighter, I'm not trying to get you like to get in any argument with anyone, but th does it make a little bit of sense to you that that? Masvidal maybe wouldn't have done that if if Edwards would have just walked toward him with his hands by his sides and talked. And, and, I don't know. I don't know, but I know when uh, this guy uh, a couple weeks ago was on me, that Z Lin guy, uh, they were telling me I was going to get suspended and put the hands on him. Backstage. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. You know. Hard to say. Maybe they give you some special slack if you're in the top five or something like that. Yeah, I don't know, you know. Yeah, because, I mean, they were telling me, you know, we fight, we're getting suspended and all this shit. So yeah, yeah, it makes sense. You can throw a three-piece, you know, and, like, a two-piece. Yeah. What if it happens? Yeah. That's true. What do they call that? Two pieces, two piece and a two soda and a biscuit and a biscuit, yeah, and a soda. whatever. That's too much, man. Funny. Well, I'll tell you, man. I really, I really want to thank you for coming on the show, man. I think you're an amazing guy and a great fighter. I'm so happy that they did not rip you off out of this decision. So as far as I'm concerned, it's two in a row. Great yeah, fights. Yeah, you got some good momentum. You know, it's good right now. You really do, man. So I really look forward to you uh, negotiating a, a, an, an even better contract with the UFC and coming up with a big fight and uh you know anytime you do man let me know we'll have you on uh the show again to talk more about it oh yeah man thank you so much as always appreciate you my pleasure max always a pleasure chatting with you have a great Thanks, evening man. sounds good take care and that was max Payne griffin great guy an amazing fight zelim imadea very tough russian the russian fighters are amazing and i've had some great training with russian fighters i didn't want people to think that when one guy came in and messed up one of my sparring partners that that was my experience or opinion i've had great great training with some amazing russian fighters strong men and uh, for the most part gentlemen there's always some people of every group though that want to try to go a little bit too crazy and uh, as an example but uh, amazing zelim imadeev i think still has a very good future but max Payne griffin was not to be denied after honestly being ripped off in that decision against uh, the very tough Tiago Alves but Dr. Adam Rota, Max Griffin beat Alves clearly and now with Imadeev there are some people that saying that was close this was actually a closer fight I felt that Max uh, did beat Imadeev but I felt he clearly beat um, uh, Tiago Alves anyway I think we are what we how far are we till we have that next segment our great uh, Asia report coming up we are about what five six minutes away from that Tom? yeah right about okay so what are we looking at here? Let me pull up something on the old trusty phone here and see what we're looking at uh, at, uh, at the event here. I was rushing around like crazy to this new studio that's actually further than where I, <laughs> from where I live than the other studio, but it's really great. I'm happy to be here. Okay, but where are we here? Let's see what we got here. UFC, and I pressed the wrong button. This is not what it is. Wait a second. Okay, where's where the heck is the UFC? Uh, and all, all it's going to do is show me May 11th and May 4th, and it doesn't want to show me the freaking the event that's uh, coming up here. Dr. Adam Rorta, say something uh, witty and uh, entertaining for a second. You know, honestly, I don't have that right now. Just this new studio trying to get everything figured out. And just uh, uh, really at the end of the day, I want to say thank you, actually, everybody, for coming in, tuning in checking us out uh, if you've never seen us before welcome uh if we love the likes comments and shares absolutely love it uh appreciate them in advance i want to say thank you so much yeah uh, oh sorry about that yeah make sure to give us a like comment and share like our page uh get the word out but yeah we do have our next segment coming up here colin we can do that for now if you want or we can jump right in it doesn't matter to me um well let me see here give me give me maybe about a minute and a half here because i was able to, <laughs> a minute and i was okay. able to find something here let me see uh ufc where are we here ah here we go jacare versus hermanson hermanson coming off of that quick uh win uh in his last fight jack hermanson going up against the gator and we are talking about jacare Souza, what a fight. That's going to be amazing. I got Jacare in that fight. 
Jack Hermanson's amazing, though, and you never know could do it. But I think Jacare is making his last run here at 40 years old or so. And I think Jacare takes that fight. Going to be exciting, though. Uh, so, Ronaldo, Jacare, Souza. Uh, and then we have, what the heck else do we have here? Hardy, Greg Hardy, back uh, in action here after that debacle of a last fight. I don't know what to say on that. I don't think, I have nothing to say, I think, on, on that Hardy fight. Good luck to both guys yeah, there. Good luck. Uh, and then we have uh, Platinum Mike Perry. I'm going for Mike Perry, originally born in Michigan, and I'm a Michigander for many years. So Platinum Mike Perry for the upset against Cowboy Alex Oliveira. You heard it here, Platinum Mike Perry. And then we have... Uh, what else do we have here? I can't even see what the hell else we have. I can't see anything. Dr. Adam Rota. Uh, I'm trying to pull it up. There you actually, go. Yeah, you so. got a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Is it, can they see that or only me? No, just you. Just oh, good. Okay, there we go. Okay, Greg Hardy. Okay, perfect. This is great. Oliveira Perry up a little bit more. And then, yeah, Glover Teixeira against Ion or Ion Kutaleba. Tough, tough fight. I got Glover Teixeira in that one. John Lidiker, Corey Sandhagen. That's going to be insane. I love Lineker. I, I I hate to pick against him, but I think maybe Corey Sandhagen takes that fight. Uh, could go either way. John Lineker, so many exciting finishes. Probably one of the hardest hitting, if not the hardest hitting man uh, in the um, bantamweight and at one point uh, flyweight division. I think, didn't he make it once? Yeah, he did. Uh, Andre, Ben Saunders against Taka, Takashi Sato. No opinion there. Not really yeah, familiar with Sato. Andre Arlovsky cheering for Arlo Arlovsky against Augusto Sakai. Uh, Carla Esparza against Verna Jandiroba. That was originally going to be Lavinia Souza. And now you have Verna Jandiroba. Again, another Invicta champion. In fact, I think Verna is... I think, is she or did she lose? You know what? I think she she fought. You know what? Where is she there? Verna? You know what? No, I think Verna Jandiroba is the current uh, Invicta Strawweight champion. So, you know, this I'm is really... I'm pretty sure. Actually. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, this is really weird. So, they're taking her away and they're taking Felicia Spencer away in the same two-month period. And so if they both win or if they're both signed for UFC contracts, how strange would that be? It'd be two Invicta titles, just one, and before one defense was made, both of the champions vacate. But you got to do it. You got to jump onto I, the bigger I show. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the point in, yeah. in uh, Invicta, right? Yeah, Farmers however. League. So if the yep. weight class is uh, not packed full. Then... Yeah, they bring you over, yeah. Yep. Um, I'm going to go for, from Team Colin Oyama, Carla Esparza, the very first UFC women's strawweight champion in history. She's amazing and a great fighter, and I'm going to go for Carla Esparza to beat Verna Jandiroba. Anyway, whenever we're ready, if we want to send it to our great correspondent with the Asia update, do your magic, Dr. Adam Rorta. What's going on, MMA Okay, I just turned my box off. What's that? I just turned my box off. On was that main event, which was phenomenal. We had King Mo versus Jerry Porchaska, uh, and that was for the inaugural Risen lightweight, light heavyweight strap. Sorry. Now, great fight. And what I loved about this was these guys have actually fought before. So, you know, the first fight, King Mo was able to finish Jerry with a KO, and, and this one did not go down like that. You know, Jerry had a, a better game plan. He came in, he moved a lot better than he did previously, you know, and it, it really played out in the first round. You could kind of feel where this one was going. Mo came out throwing heat. He was throwing fire right off the bat, and he was using a lot of energy. Jerry was using his range. He was keeping Mo out there. And really taking his time. And what we saw was over the next three rounds, this really played out. And Mo started to really fade. And by the third round, Mo was essentially done. He was gassed. And he was a sitting duck. His movement had slowed down. He wasn't really throwing anything that was significant. And Jerry took advantage and he was able to get in there and finish it off with the TKO. 
great finish for Jerry. The rest of the card was really fantastic as well. I love what Risen is doing. And I was actually having this conversation with Ensign and Noe on the show last week. And we were actually talking about what Risen is doing in Asian MMA. And it, it is kind of a throwback to that Pride era. So it does give me this sort of nostalgic feeling, which I really enjoy. And don't get me wrong. There are other promotions in Asia I really love. But something about Risen just strikes that chord with me. With that being said, I want to move on to Road FC. Now, they've finalized their card for Road FC 53, which is going to take place May 18th. Now, the headline on this is the conclusion to their lightweight tournament. We've got Kona Sol versus Mansuri Bonarawi to cap off their lightweight tournament. Now, not only does this crown the champ, finish the tournament, they also get a million-dollar cash prize for the tournament. Now... You know, in the McGregor era of MMA, we've got all these people talk of money fights and all these things. But in Asian MMA, a million dollars prize for a fight is still a very significant amount of money. So that's why this has been such a big deal. Road puts on great shows. And, you know, because they're kind of a Korean show, they're not super Western friendly. And so a lot of people don't follow them. But if you're an MMA fan, if you're an Asian MMA fan, you definitely should because they have great fights. Definitely worth checking out. So over the weekend as well, one championship held one of their Heroes events in China. I've got to be honest, I have only really passively followed the One Heroes series. And for those of you who don't know what it is, it's very similar to their One Warrior series where... You know, they're essentially developing talent. They're finding new fighters and bringing them sort of into the 1FC network or the 1 Championship network. Now, you know, I've really enjoyed Warrior Series, and every time I tune into Hero Series, I actually really enjoy the fights. They're very good. It's just, you know, I don't know for whatever reason I haven't gotten into it. And I watched this last one over the weekend. It was fantastic. It's on the 1 app. So, well... Not for you guys in the U.S., but that is what VPNs are for if you don't have cable. So get a VPN, use the one app, let it think you're in Asia. Fantastic uh, content. And I love that they put all their content on the app. That's one of my favorite things about it. Now, on a final Asian MMA note, but not really an Asian MMA note, but definitely an Asian MMA note now, is that Rich Franklin has been announced as being inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. That's significant to Asian MMA because Rich is currently an executive with One Championship. He sort of also heads up the One Warrior series. That's sort of his baby at One. And so he has played a very critical role in this sort of last few years of One Championship's dominance in Asian MMA. Now, some of you guys might not remember, but when UFC was just coming out of the Dark Ages, when Rich Franklin was their champion... He sort of became the face of the company. He was an intelligent, articulate guy who could go on cable news, who could talk to pundits, and really win people over. I think a lot of the mainstream popularity that the UFC and MMA in general has today, they owe to Rich Franklin. And in Asian MMA, we owe quite a bit to him. He's done quite a few very interesting things with one. So, Rich, congratulations. That's all I have for you guys today for the MMA Power Hour update, but I'm going to transition over and leave you with a clip from my conversation last week with Ensign Inouye. And if you want to see the full interview, you can find that on the Asian MMA Podcast, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, anywhere you get a podcast, we're there. But I tell you a funny story because when I, the reason why I say this is because when I went there, um, I got an email from one in, inviting me to the press conference. Nice. And so I went to the press conference, supported it, and um, they said on the email, it said um, everyone at the press conference has two complimentary tickets. So I'm like, oh, cool. So I messaged them and get two complimentary tickets. Yeah. I go down there to get my tickets, and I noticed on the second floor, which is cool too. I mean, I'm not going to play like, oh, you know who I am. I should get better tickets. So like, okay, second floor. I went to the second floor. It was literally... The worst seats in the house. <laughs> it was the last seat on the top of the arena. And you think that's already bad, but I'm thinking, okay, it's all right. I'll cool, I'm cool with it. I'll just watch the big screen because yeah. we can't even see the ring. It's so, yeah. so high. But it's all in the corner. We can't see any big screens. So I actually went to the seats and I looked at my girlfriend and I said, shit, you know what? We're, we're better off watching it at home, yeah. off the, off the online. So I said, you know what? This is, this is, this is ridiculous. So 
we left. We're gonna leave. We're leaving, and I'm 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 tight with the Shuto guys, and they're collab with one. So yeah. I just let them know. You know, I want to know what one thinks of me. Mm. I mean, are they trying to dish me or or say get we don't want you around and do it in a slight way? If they are, tell them to tell me in my face that mm. they don't want me. That's cool. I won't come to it. I won't support one. And he's like, he got free freaked out, saying, "No, oh, there's something wrong. There's a mistake." Blah blah blah. Got me good seats, but it was it was really weird that that happened. Yeah. You know, and first first I wanted to tell him to can you. I, I, when I met Chatri, Chatri came up and said, I've been a big fan of yours. And he shook my hand. Mm. He, I said, hi. And I, I told him, you know, I appreciate I love what you're doing with the martial art. Had a good conversation. So I highly doubted that that happened. Yeah. It would have happened on purpose. So I wanted to have that Mr. Sakamoto from Shuto. I mean, ask the one, you know, what's up? Was that a mis- just a, if it was just a mistake, fine. Mm. But if this is a little message that they're trying to get to me, don't play that game. Just tell me straight up. We don't want you at our events. Yeah. And if that's the case, fine. You know, so, but you know, then I sat back and I thought, you know what? They had so many. They had no English speak, um, Japanese speaking workers, and yeah. there are so many people. And I think they're growing just so fast that a lot of things, like like you said, the, one of the executives talking to the referee. Yeah. I think instead of that being sketchy, I don't know. I'm thinking more, more. It might be just that they're just growing so fast. They can't do things. They don't know how to keep it all straight yet. Well, they have been around since 2011, though. I mean, oh, okay. okay. You know, we can't. Can't I give it that, yeah, yeah. All the way. But but the ticket thing that that actually happened to me. I helped them out. This is going. I think the second show or their first show in. It, it must have been their first show in Bangkok, mm-hmm. and I had put them in touch with uh, like some of the universities. They wanted to get in touch with like clubs and stuff like that in Thailand that mm-hmm. could bring people in. And um, I asked them, could I have two tickets for my my girlfriend? I actually worked on that show as a cage inspector for one. Oh, wow. And so they gave me two seats for my girlfriend, and she showed up, and it was the same thing. It was the last row oh. in the back of the stadium at one at uh, Impact, and like behind, she couldn't even see the screen. That's how far That's back they were. That's like me. <laughs> so, so she left. Her and her friend left, and I felt horrible because her friend was a, a huge fan of DSA. The, oh, uh, their, at really? the time, he was Thai champion. He lost that night to Neto. But and they didn't even get to watch it. They didn't even get to watch it because they couldn't see anything. And yeah, no I, sense stay there, yeah. Yeah, I felt horrible. I mean, I, I talked to uh, – I, I know several people at one, and so I reached out and was like, hey, you know, I don't – I'm not – I don't want to make a big deal of it, but, you know, I, I did, like, a real solid for you guys, and this is what happened. They are like, oh, I apologize. It was an oversight. I told so, – he, he basically said I told someone else to take care of it. Uh, He's like, I'll, next time we come to Bangkok, I'll make it up to you. And they did. He, he – completely did well they didn't learn from it because they're still doing it <laughs> well that guy's no longer at one so oh, okay, I, he, okay. he obviously wasn't responsible for the same thing but he the next time around like i didn't even have to ask him he was like hey i remember what happened last time let me take care of you oh wow that's cool that's and cool. so like he's like i really want to make it up to you i apologize i had no intention of that happening uh-huh, uh-huh. but at, at the same time this was i mean i can understand where oversights happen but uh-huh. Not like that. I mean, like for me, I can understand it happening because it's like a, you know, a lot of people and like, I'm not you, uh-huh. right? but you're you. And if they invited you to the press conference to ask you for your support, they should be like, Hey, well, see, I didn't want to go on that mode. Yeah. Saying, Hey, you know who I am? You know, I mean, it's free tickets and yeah. I don't want to say, Oh, I, I like, thanks for the free tickets, but it's not good free tickets. You know, I don't yeah. want to sound like that. So I, yeah. I didn't really want to make a stink about it. And, you know, I was thinking actually, I actually wrote something up. I was going to post on social media that this is what they gave me. Mm. This is kind of screwed up, you know, and that kind of stuff. And I thought when I reread it, I thought it looks like I'm, I'm a crybaby. Mm. Like I'm crying about tickets that I got free that I want better tickets. And mm. I said, you know, I decided not to post it. So I just wanted to let people know. So I post on Instagram. I, I put two pictures because I put this is what the tickets that one gave me. Yeah. And I put them on the bottom where they got me like pretty close to the ring. This is what Mr. Sakamoto ended up getting me. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Sakamoto. So I kind of threw it out there in a real <laughs> subtle way, but not conf- not of emphasizing what what the hell won. You yeah. know, it's more like thank you, Mr. Sakamoto. But people went off on it in Instagram. Man, what a legend, Ensign Inouye. Big respect for our representative, Dana Blowen, over in Thailand, man. You are awesome. Really appreciate the great interview. Ensign Inouye, man. Remember Dr. Adam Rorta? When he came in, 
20 years ago into the UFC, they brought an amazing wrestler from Iowa who had wrestled under Dan Gable, uh, Royce the Farmer Alger. And Jeff Blatnick, may he rest in peace, was one of the people calling that. And uh, he was controlling the position until Ensign Inouye armbarred him from the guard. That was freaking amazing, wasn't it? And, Absolutely. Yeah, and talking about that armbar. Yeah, yeah. And what was so amazing also is that, what, two years later at Japan Valley Tudo, I think it was 98, he did it to Randy Couture. And then afterward, his dog, like a bulldog or something like that, was brought into the ring in uh, in Japan. Man, Ensign Inoue, really, really great. Just a member of, uh, of, of such a great team with his brother Egan and these just amazing, super tough guys from Hawaii. Hawaii. Uh, that was like pre BJ Penn talking about the original Hawaiians that were uh, that were contributing to uh, MMA. Uh, the Inouye brothers, absolute legends. Ensign is, is just trem tremendous. He was never that big a heavyweight, uh, but competed mostly at heavyweight and won most of his fights. What an uh, what an amazing fight against Frank Shamrock too. That was at light heavyweight, and uh, he did end up losing that fight. But it was a really tough fight against Frank Shamrock at in his prime Ensign in a way check it out you got to YouTube that freaking uh, amazing <laughs> absolutely a couple great great arm bars that he's really yes. just I mean goes yeah. back in the books really absolutely Ensign in a way a true badass absolutely amazing guy real and, quick before we bring on our next guest Colin I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to uh, cross train MMA fighter where you can get some awesome apparel they have some some great t-shirts where you can uh, more or less show your pride strut your stuff and uh, Feel good in it. It's very high quality athletic t shirts uh, with some awesome, uh, just just a way to uh, show your pride. And and quite frankly, Colin, it's, it's one of the easiest ways for a lot of people to show support for the show uh, and, and be able to get themselves involved as well. Uh, I mean, it's yours. Uh, it's your company. These awesome T-shirts are, are supporting a lot of your production and our production budget. So, uh, boys and girls, that's an excellent way to show your support if you uh, ever want to uh, help us out, I guess. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Because we are always looking for new equipment. We want to upgrade. Uh, it's always going to happen. Uh, you know, the next big thing is going to come out next week. But, uh, Colin, I want to also shout out Cross Train, or not Cross, Cross Train MMA Fighter, but Combat Press where every fight has a story, make sure to go to combatpress.com, get your up-to-date news there. Also, our huge sponsors getting us in this awesome studio. Uh, we're talking about none other than Digi South, and I apologize for my other, but they are really good with social media marketing, all things con with content production. Uh, they can help you out. So go to digisouth.co. Uh, and I think any minute, Colin, we can actually just give a... Uh, our, our, our next, next guest, guest a, a ring yeah let's do it let's get the skype uh, let's get the skype dance going He's not there yet. That's strange. Mom, just... mom, mom, mom. <laughs> oh, Skype calling. Do, Let's see. Doing what we can. Yeah, we are. We are. We are doing it. Let me tell him that we Skype call. So him. those of you tuning in the first time, this oh, there we go. He's calling in. Calling right in. Here. Good. Let's do it. Hey, Vinny, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Vinny? Yes, yeah. Excellent. I see you right there. Let me give you a proper introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this next guest is one of the best fighters out there. He fought for Bellator. He just won a CES championship. This man is going to be either in the UFC or 1FC or somewhere really big and he's going to be he's going to be absolutely lighting it up if I can keep this earpiece in. Honestly, I think this is the most, one of the most exciting prospects in the world today and we're talking about Mr. Vinicius De Jesus. Welcome to the show, Vinny. Great to see you, my friend. Awesome to be here with you guys, too. Thank you very much for having me, Colin. My pleasure, always. So, ladies and gentlemen, one of our production assistants kind of screwed up with the order of the guests, so we are late in uh, contacting Vinny, and he is such a gentleman and a nice guy. He was able to extend the amount of time available uh, in his schedule tonight, so I want to thank you so much on camera, uh, Vinny DeJesus. Sorry for being late, and uh, you are a much-respected guest, and uh, this was just something that, that got confused here. 
guarantee it will never happen again, my friend. Absolutely, that's no problem at all. You know, actually, the the little change gave me time to put my kids to sleep. You know, they was kind of giving me a little trouble here, awesome. so this extra 30, 40 minutes I get, I put them to sleep. So now I have a little bit more quiet time, so I can comfortably speak with you guys. Awesome, I really appreciate that. How many kids do you have? Well, four total now. That's awesome, man. Beautiful, beautiful family. What do you have? Two boys, two girls, or what? Three girls, one boy. That's cool, and man. It's the biggest travel. That's too cool. much energy. Cool, I bet. Are any of them uh, fight fans yet, or they're too young to understand fights? No, my 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 two older girls, they they know the basics of jujitsu. They don't train consistently because they are more focused on no ballet and dance. And they like music as well. But they make sure they learn the step by step of self defense, you know, never know what it needs to use it. Absolutely. Very, very true. I definitely advocate that uh, for for men and women. But I think one of the best self defense uh, techniques for women, I think, really is the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Like, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is the, is the number one self defense. And like, you can escape from situations from standing up if you need to. To really damage the aggressor, you can definitely you no know, break arm, break a, a knee. Uh, but it's the number one self-defense, and definitely if you learn some type of striking, you're gonna be a, a very well defensive person. Well-rounded, absolutely. And you are someone that knows all of it, man. You are a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You're a really good striker. Your wrestling is good. Um, I'm really excited about uh, about what you can continue doing. Uh, you, I think your record shows as like eight or eight or nine and two, but the two losses were both split decisions, which really could have been wins. So essentially, for the most part, you're for the most part an undefeated fighter in most people's minds, and uh, and you're in a great division 170 pounds congratulations on this this recent win i think you fought three weeks ago uh winning the welterweight title at uh, ces yeah i was really excited really excited time really excited show you no know, i was very happy to be on the card absolutely how did that fight go uh compared to what you were expecting was it easier was it harder or was it pretty much what you were thinking uh you were going to have from that opponent yeah, no, I think the fight and the and the way I want I want to to be um, with a few chains during the road, you know, um, I was really planning to to take him to the ground, but I get so comfortable with the strike in some point, then I I don't even think to go to the ground anymore. And then as he was trying to take me down and in, in the in the frustrate him with my defense, and there was no what. Uh, now I don't want to go to the ground. I just want to. I want to knock you out. And uh, he, he was he was very skeptical. You know, he was moving very much backwards. He not really engaged to the fight. What make a little harder to to create the the momentum to the to the knockout to the the, the battle connections or from the points. Uh, but in the way, I, I could to, to run in the fight in my piece. You know, I, I could to be in control for the whole five rounds and uh, frustrate his techniques. Every time he tried to engage, I could to connect my points and his way in and then he's back to to be running around the cage. No, it was really, was really skeptical fight, a fighter, but you know, in the way it could be very, very dominating and controlling the, the action. Yep, absolutely. So remind us again, uh, where are you training? Well, so now my, my man camp is, is made in the heavy hitting boxing in Stanford and uh, Hansel Gracie uh, in New York, Hansel Gracie Academy in New York. Excellent. Those be my, my two man place here in the US. Excellent. Now at Hansel Gracie's, there are some famous fighters still training there or, or, or no? Oh, he, he's teach, Hansel Gracie teach a lot. Uh, he, of course, he's, he's traveling a lot. He's a very busy man, so it's very exciting when he has some some stop, some time to stop in the, in the gym in New York, and then he teach a bunch of, of seminars and techniques, and so all the, the students get very excited. Mm -hmm. And yes, man, we we have a bunch of killers there, a lot of famous fighter, a lot of dangerous fighter. Who are some uh, of the coming fighters? Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Vinny, but who are some of the better mm -hmm. fighters there that you train with uh, at Henzo's? Well, one of the killers you have uh, Rafael Natal from UFC. You have David Brand, and now he's UFC. And before he was 
uh, two class, two weight class world champion in the world, in the world series of fight. Mm -hmm. We have Neyman Gracie, mm -hmm. one of the most prospects guys in Bellator. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. brown hand is unbelievable. Uh, we have made camp training for Jarson Pierre when he fight against Bisping. Uh, he did all his ground game with Dunhead. Uh, we have João Zeferino, then like he's a big name in the PFL, and also we're gonna be. He, see him bump it up in UFC. Uh, so no man, many names. You know, I just mentioned the guys and I, I, I trained the most. But besides that, talking about the jiu-jitsu, there's a lot of famous names like Gordon Ryan. You know, his brother is being a very prospecting kids, beating everybody, every yes. tough belt across his 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 front. Uh, wow, man, it's many names. You know, man. many names, many different styles. That's fantastic. I didn't know you're training with also with all those killers there, man, and you're one of them. So I'm really excited to see where you end up. I believe where you would prefer is the UFC. Am I right? Yes, man. No, for it's, it's, the, it's the biggest shows we we we, we have right now. Every everybody's been competing, you know, to to really catch up. Bellator has been doing. A, amazing job like you know make like more events now some some weeks they do like friday and saturday they really catching up the fans you know they doing pretty exciting fights but ufc is still the the, the most dominated yeah. event and you know, they always keep bringing more and more new prospects guys that are really hungry to show what they they are capable to do it and you know i'm one of those guys i want to show for all those events and i fight to it you know man i'm, I'm capable to do a lot of stuff and i'm, and I'm 29 i'm still getting better and my and my obsession is to getting better absolutely in, in all aspects of the arts absolutely man at 29 i i just think you know you're you are probably not even quite yet in your prime but you're very close and you're just this good a uh, fighter is amazing man and you train with all those great guys i know neiman Gray Gracie's in the tournament there, and he's going to fight the winner of John Fitch against uh, Rory McDonald. That should be really exciting. And uh, and then Neiman, I know, would have a challenging fight, but it's possible he could win. Uh, also, 170, man. This is this is the division where you've always fought and where you will remain, or are you looking at other weight divisions possibly? Well, I have fought so, fought, fight so far in four in three divisions. You know, I have done 155, 170, and 185. Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to you know to explore a little bit of the 165. You know, soon I have opportunity to to represent in, those, in that division, and I think it's going to be a division and it's going to be really really nice cutaway. You know, for 170 right now, I, I do 170 really really comfortable. You know, not suffering. Uh, sometimes I and I'm able to make it to get like a, 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 some fruits, a little bit of water before I make my way in officially. I like that. Just because the, this, whole, just because this whole process of, of making the cutaway right and, and from the best way, so I don't be suffering anymore for the 170. For 155, it will be like five pounds five pound more to cut. What I think is definitely going to be a problem. So it's a, it's a division that I'm, I'm really thinking about to, to probably enjoy in the near future. Very cool. Because, you know, it seems like in the UFC, a lot of times when they bring someone in first, it's not always the perfect situation, right? Like perfect would be probably if they created 165 pound uh, class, they give you three months notice, this maybe would be perfect. Or like 170, they give you three months notice, but what could happen is they bring you in a 155 and give you five weeks notice or they bring you 185 and give you three weeks notice i mean i guess you're prepared maybe this could happen right call him prepare for anything brother awesome no, like i have i have passed for all of the fucking situations nice you know, i have i have they've done 155 in, in in less than 10 days notice, uh, I have done 168 in, in, in a, yeah, 10 days notice for a pro boxing match. I have done 185 in 10 days notice for Bellator. Uh, yeah, so I have done some some experience with my with my body and like definitely it's always better if you have that time, then you don't need to give punishment to your body. But right. if you need to make the sacrifice, you know, I'm willing to do it. Yeah, if, if, if the opportunity is, you no, know, it's, it's 
don't want you don't want to let that pass i'm gonna take it exactly without a doubt man and i think you really are one of the more balanced fighters out there i know when we spoke last time i said that you look at the brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts and other than like damian maya and jake shields uh most of them maybe had a little bit of striking but not so much wrestling and so what i think is really special about you is you have very good striking but also good wrestling along with being a black belt uh, in brazilian jiu-jitsu and this is amazing you know vai cavallo fabricio verdum uh, became a very good striker but never so good with the wrestling right you know uh, damian maya became a very good wrestler, but never so good with the striking. Uh, Jake Shields became uh, uh, very good with the wrestling, but never so good with the striking. So to me, for you to be so good with all three of them, I think makes you a very, very special athlete and a very dangerous uh, and uh, exciting prospect for anyone. Uh, looking at the divisions, my friend, in the 170, which I think maybe might be your preference, I know you can fight anywhere, but 170 is so stacked in the UFC. Who are some of the fighters? Are there any fighters maybe that you have a uh, friendship with or a relationship with or any fighters that you would like to fight very much? You know, we're talking about, we have Kamaro Usman, Colby Covington, Jorge Masvidal, there's Damian Maya still there, there's uh, Ben Askren, Robbie Lawler, uh, people like this uh, are there any of these people that you know personally or that you would like to fight no I don't any one of those kids personally but um, you know I mean I see I not see myself uh, such a uh, far away from them yeah uh, definitely I'm different, I'm different level than them right now but with the time and training we, we get we, we catch it up and then yeah. some at some point we can face it face each other you know i mean i'm not i'm not really concerned about it you know? right i'm just like i really want to to go to that top level then like i can i can really show what i'm capable to and then i gotta and i need challenge you know those kind of guys gonna at some point i will need challenge like those top killers in ufc yeah absolutely so you're patient as you should be at 29 i think like they say you have time right yeah yeah i know but like time is I don't want to, to, to be to fight for the rest of my life like like professionally. I'm see like my career going around my 36, 37 maximum. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, no, I'm, I'm very busy man. I really like to do other stuff like professionally and uh, but I want to take everything possible from this journey, you know, to my to what I get right now here, what I can what I'm capable to do for my, my next five years, where I can where I can reach, you know, and right now I'm seeing myself with my with my team, we can reach a serious top top caliber of, of uh, event, of exposure, of opponents. And uh, so I, we're going to explore for the next five years. Yeah. The, where are we going to reach and how we're going to reach, how we're going to get there, how much we, we want to achieve in these five years of rest than I have in my fight career. And now after this time, we know things change, you know, my, 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 my plane right now is, is playing for the next five years, but into the process, you know, things go maybe very well and definitely can change our mind. But personally right now, my, my plan is to fight for five or six more years professionally. I like that. I like that. What What do you think about the uh, the new weight divisions? Like you mentioned, 165 pounds. I know Ben Askren felt like he would love that weight division. I think also Jorge Masvidal. I think uh, Habib Nurmagomedov would love the the 165. Uh, do you think that this is going to happen? Soon, I mean, I think many of us hope it is, but we keep waiting year after year after year. Are you hearing anything, or do you have a prediction? Maybe this is going to happen soon, or, or do you think it's not likely? You mean all the all the new divisions that we've been talking about? Yeah, yes. The well, let's say for 165, which would be any, even that, any of these new divisions. But how about 165 at first? I believe 165 is already running on Bellator. Oh, I didn't know that. The division is already running, and I believe. I did not know that. Okay, so if it's running in Bellator, then that would be great uh, if the UFC brought it in. Um, I don't want to be sure with you. I don't want to be sure with you and, and believe it that it's running. 
uh, if I don't have a, mis a misunderstanding communication between me and my partner, but uh, I'm pretty sure what my partner trained, uh, he fight in 165 on, the, on Mike Descartes. I fight against uh, Rodolfo Barcelos. Oh, wow. Okay. I did not know that. I did not know that if Bellator already has it running. But UFC, I know, doesn't have it running. Do you think it's realistic uh, to think maybe oh, the... Uh Maybe it could be wrong. Huh? I don't want to give wrong information, but I, probably it was catch weight, was not division. A, a catch weight, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right, yeah. I wish I don't want to give you misinformation. That's okay, that's okay. Do you think there's a lot of hope that the UFC will put in 165 soon? I know you hope so, but is it realistic or do you think it's going to be more than one year or two years or three years before this? I I think it's necessary. It's, it's a necessity to have more divisions. You know, it's, it's a big gap. Yeah, it's a big gap in one division to another. You know, if less punishment for the athletes. You know, more, more variation of styles. Yeah. You know, people don't need to worry about to give those big, huge cuts like 20, 25, sometimes 30 pounds. What's it's not really help for athletes. I know it's gonna be, it's gonna make the game even more interesting. Have more weight class divisions. I think so too. I think 165 would be uh, absolutely a really great division. Um, so tell us a little bit more about uh, about what you like to do. I really want people to get to know uh, Vinicius De Jesus. Vinny, you are a great guy. You're a nice person, a respectful, a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, very hard to do, and you're such a great conditioned guy with a great camp. What do, what do you like to do? do did you grow up playing soccer? If so, who is your favorite team? Did you play other sports? It's a funny environment. You know, my fam, my my family from the part of my mom, we have a very a very strong uh, uh, customs on the on the kitchen. You know, have very good. We used to to, to growing up cooking a lot. So cool. I, I, I was chef. Oh, cool! I used, I used to work as a chef. I have. I have oh I have built my own um, show show uh, catering in Brazil. Oh wow! I use my wow. private kitchen, so it's something I love to do. It so most of the times I am like free and I have time. I I, I like to you know experiment experiment thing in my kitchen. Very cool. Do you do you, do you make um, more Brazilian things like Brazilian barbecue or more American things or equal of both? Uh, man, I, I I do I like to do all different styles. You know, I like to do Mexican. I like to do Italian. I like I like to 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 learn a little bit more of culture by food. Nice. You know, what, what kind of food this culture like to eat? What kind of ingredients they have in their in their area? You know, so like they you you learn a little bit of the history of the people by the food they eat. So I love the way like uh, Brazil preserve a lot of ingredients from original from Brazil. So I like to see France, sometimes they have very specific ingredients. So like they go a little bit deeper in the culture of different, different countries. Absolutely. Where in Brazil were you from? I'm from Rio Grande do Sul. It's the last state in Brazil. we neighbors with uh, Argentina and Uruguay. So we are very, very in the south. Interesting. Very cool. Let me ask you, with, with you being a chef, uh, is it easy when you have to, to cut weight? Like if you're going to fight in a lower weight, to, is it difficult if you have to not eat this tasty food or it's, it's, is it not so hard for you? Uh, at this point, no. And, uh, and I have, and I have an even worse situation than I was, I was, I was working in the kitchen and I need to do 155. Mm. And I was kind of heavy, I was like one, 190, 195. Oh. And then I was supposed to fight 170. I was supposed to fight 170. Mm -hmm. And then my partner trained and get hurt. And then he asked me if I want to take 155 and say, all right, you know, go for main event. Let's go make 155. So I make to 170 to 155 in one week. Wow. And I was working the restaurant. That's you know? So like, oh, I got to do this. I got to lose weight. Uh, I could not eat nothing. That's tough. And you know, when, you, when you're cutting weight, and I know for 170, it's not that much to cut. But if you have to be cutting weight, when you eat at the table with your daughters and your son, is it okay if they eat the big hamburger or pizza or Brazilian barbecue? Will they eat this in front of you? Or do you ask them to eat this in a different room when you eat your salad with the chicken in it or fish? 
Oh, no, it's all cool, you know, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the discipline mindset. But definitely, we're not assholes here. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they, they don't eat um, stuff when I'm doing, like, cutaway. But if you want to eat something else, like some sweet, or something, that's a big problem. But my wife, she always, like, makes sure when I need to cut away, she makes, like, all clean diet for everybody. Uh-huh. But she knows if she want to cheat, she can cheat. I cannot. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Now, you know what? Since you're a chef, one of the things I've heard is that a lot of fighters, when they have to cut weight and then or lose weight, will eat all food that doesn't taste good because it's low calorie. But if you're a chef, you probably know how to put seasoning on the food even though Absolutely. right to make it taste better even though it's a very low calorie food right yeah yeah you know and, and i have a very i like to have like you know a basic plant natural food you know so i i try to, to cut it out a little bit of the salt so i don't have too much water retention on the body right but yeah i know I just find a way to to make you know to give a little more taste for the the vegetable or for the meat than i'm gonna, you're gonna eat no, but I make very good fancy stuff sometimes. Very even cool. Even the diet, even the tough diet. Very cool. Do you have any favorite sports teams or favorite musical groups or or actors? Who are the people that you admire in in other sports or in music or in in movies? You know, man, I used to play music for a while, so I'm very a big fan of music. Uh, and since I moved to the U.S., you know, I start to to improve my English and learning better. I, I become like fan of a lot of artists. Then I start to following them just for for listen their music because they like. So help me with the English, the learning. So I have this um, the artist. Then like he's very famous in England. And then, what his name? Eddie Shamba. I don't gonna remember his name right now because I'm terrible with names. That's okay. <laughs> and, and how about how about music groups like uh, rock groups? Any favorites? Not American, you know, because uh, Americans. I'm um, oh, sorry, one second. Say, say it again, baby. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is my wife listen a lot at home, so I got to get. And this is a really good band, Guns N' Roses. Nice, yes, the classic group, Guns N' Roses. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, uh, my wife is, she's just like Guns N' Roses, baby. I love it. Oh yeah, that's my that's my era with a gray beard here. Yeah. I love that. They were she awesome. Up. She going up just listen to that. Absolutely, nice man. Axel Rose all the way. Absolutely. Great stuff. And then how about soccer? You must have played some soccer. Everyone I think in Brazil plays some soccer or no? Well, it's the it's the most popular uh, it's one of the most popular sports in Brazil is, is Jiu Jitsu. Uh, but no, I was not the biggest soccer fan or play. I play as a as a, every kid. But I was kind of good, but never attracted my attention. You know, what Understood. really get me like was was music, fighting, and that a little bit older, like make make stuff with food. I, like I was that. never a big fan of uh, of soccer, but what catch me a lot in my my young life was volleyball. Volleyball oh, yeah. really catch me like as a strategic game. Yeah, you know, it's a practice game. Uh, I used to play a lot. I was uh, I almost go pro for a uh, for a. Uh, uh, high school and I was cool. trying to get like the, the trials for that school and uh, but yeah it's the game that I'm still playing sometimes that's sometimes cool just for fun just for fun absolutely you can play that probably with your kids right yeah yeah absolutely I know it's like for me I always have the, I always feel that I have like more talent with the hands so perfect for volleyball yep but with feet, mm, I'm still to improve my kicks, but it's not that best. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Let me ask you a question, Vinny. When you first started to train in combat sports, it was only jujitsu in the beginning, right? Or, or it was also striking and wrestling? I think jujitsu first, right? No, no. Like the the journey and, and fighting start uh, pretty much like with the with the art of of capoeira. Ah, I, I, yeah. So maybe I, I have never mentioned this this straight line for you, but um, I start primarily on capoeira. And so it was like developing kicks, you know, and how to move a lot on the ground, you know, and be and make those those flips transition in the on the capoeira art. Uh, and then I trained capoeira for two or three years before I I make the transition for uh, jujitsu and boxing. So after I 
I, I joined jiu-jitsu, I joined boxing, by the way. So, because my father was the chief, the coach. So, I was to train jiu-jitsu and box simultaneously, and sometimes capoeira. So, I grew up with these three arts always uh, with me. So, this is why, like, I, I don't like to classify myself with a striker or a grappler. You know, I, I come from both together. Right. So, what I, what I like to do is, like, get all of those facts better and better. How Absolutely. I can apply capoeira to MMA, how I can apply box better for MMA, how I can apply my jiu-jitsu and grappling to MMA. So like mix that up with that precision and it can be very, very dangerous in any, any situation and stand up on the ground. Absolutely, you know you know who that makes me think of? One of your uh, Brazilian countrymen, the, his last name is Oleski Dos Santos, capoeira they call him. He's having a great success in the UFC, and I think you have some similar similar qualities to him. Are you familiar with him? Yes, very familiar. Just watch one of his big victory in UFC. Uh, yeah, the guy's been, been doing great, great uh, work with the way he's been mixing the, the aggressive style of capoeira with his ground. You know, he's, he's a very smart guy, very yeah. smart player. I like the way he, he, he's been using his, his weapons, you know, yeah. and like, he's the kind of guy for like I, I use as a mural too. Absolutely, and he and you're four years younger than him. I checked, I think he's 33 years old. So it's almost like you're a younger Zaleski Dos Santos type of fighter. And I honestly really feel you'll have the same impact, in, except I honestly think that perhaps your wrestling and striking to me maybe is a little bit better than his. But, you know, I, obviously we have respect for him. He's an amazing fighter. But for people who don't know, for people who saw him and haven't seen Vinny uh, fight yet, Vinny is his own man, of course, but I think the style, the dynamic capoeira, the, the jiu-jitsu high level is similar to, uh, to uh, I think it's what, Elazer Zaleski Dos Santos? I forget his first name, something like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not really clear why, what was this full name, but I remember his, his uh, figure. Yeah, absolutely. And so I really think you're going to be really, really absolutely killing it in the UFC, man. I can't wait to the see plane. that. There's the plane. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, in, in, in the last few minutes we have with you, uh, Vinny, let us know if there's any sponsors you want to thank, uh, if you're open to, to new sponsorships. I know in UFC, mostly has to be, uh, it has to be Reebok when you're in there, but perhaps for other things outside. But tell us, uh, you know, if you want to thank anybody, if you want anyone to contact you, if they are interested in sponsoring you, and then also anybody you want to thank personally, uh, coaches or anything for all the, uh, the, the great skills and teaching and, and uh, you know, and uh, experience experience that you're getting on this great journey to success in MMA. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for the space. And uh, if you're going to mention everybody, man, it's going to be a lot of names. It's okay. It's okay. Go <laughs> ahead. They're definitely going to, because no, it's been a, a long journey. You know, we've been trying to, to put our, our best work uh, into the, in, in, into this, this big uh, project that we have. Uh, for for this year, you know, for the last for the past five years, we've been work really hard, and this, and finally, you no know, last in the end of the last year and uh, in the beginning of this year, I'm very commitment to to achieve very very uh, far before it was far away goals, but now it looks very getting very very near, and this year I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely gonna be on the on the big on the big arenas more and more and uh, be more around. The, the fans, you know, been talking more with them so they know who we are. Uh, but definitely, you know, we're going, we're going to start with a big thank you to my wife, you know, <laughs> Viviana. Of course. Because she was one of the persons that's been with me since the beginning. And she's to get a lot of the stuff that I need to to be organized with the MMA stuff, like a medical school, like medical exams, like, you know, paperwork, then I don't want to think about this. She's take care of all of this. All my coaches, my father, you know, Vitor De Jesus, my, my boxing coach, Paul Sandalo, you know, all the team, Hanzo Gracie, and uh, my, my media guy, Marcel, has been fantastic, doing fantastic job since he, he joined the team, you know, and like, we, we have seen a lot of improvement as a team, you know, personally, and uh, and now my sponsors, you know, I want to thank you very much, uh, Dixon City Hyundai from Pennsylvania, to be, get together with the project we present to them, you know, and be trust 
know with, with closing eyes uh, what we have been done, uh, present to them as, as, a, as a team. And uh, Hip Dory from Brazil, you know, fight where his, we just start some, some good partnership. He's been very young, but so far we, we've been show each other, then like we are together and uh, definitely gonna reach very, very uh, top, top level caliber on the UFC or even on Bellator. Absolutely. That's it. And we are very open to, to more new sponsors, new brands, and really want to to put their, their logos together with us and, uh, and Bellator or CES or whatever show they want to expose their brand for the world. Man, I'm here and gonna be very happy to close any good deal for we make this partnership happen. You know, contact us from Instagram and then let's go get into talks. Absolutely. Well, I definitely think you have a great team and a great group of people behind you. Your father seems like a great guy. And, uh, and uh, you know, give a shout out to, to your dad, Vitor De Jesus. He is a gentleman and he really appreciates uh, uh, you being on our show. And, uh, and I really appreciate him uh, being there for you. To me, you know, someone's dad is so important. My dad passed away, is in heaven now. And, uh, you know, I wish he was here. So I always say, as I'm sure you do, uh, appreciate you your dad a lot obviously your mother as well but a lot of times people don't think about their dad because they're so used to him they think the dad will always be here forever and then one day he won't so i always say you know your dad probably looks out for you more than anyone in the world and it, right if you realize that you know what i mean so you got a great dad you know and uh, and a great family and your wife and your kids ladies and gentlemen this is a great guy four children he's a great humble respectful person a family man this is one of the best guys you can cheer for and get to know in the world of mma how can people support you on social media what are the your favorite social media uh venues and what are the addresses people can follow you and support you on uh, social media uh so first of all you guys can uh, follow me for my men uh the media i use the most is me instagram uh, so you can find me like a Vini de Jesus BJJ, Vini de Jesus BJJ on Instagram. On Facebook, I go like Vinicius de Jesus, as, as mostly fans know how, how, how I go on, on fights. Uh, and on Twitter, Vini de Jesus MMA. Awesome. Well, Vinny, I'm so glad to have you on the show, man. Always a pleasure to chat with you. Let me know when you find out anything, man, if you want to come back on the show to announce when your next fight is and talk about before or after, whatever you want, let me know. And we're really happy to support you. And uh, I believe in you 100%, brother. I'm really excited for what's going to happen for you coming up in when you're 29 years old and then in your 30s when you're going to absolutely kill it in the ufc i really believe it my friend thank you very much Colin. i really appreciate it. it's always very fun to have this conversation with you guys and definitely i want uh, this week we're about to close a few deals and uh soon we're gonna be annunciate what are we who are you gonna kick next absolutely man it's gonna be who's your next victim i think right absolutely Awesome. Wherever you are, we're just looking for you. <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. I appreciate it. I'll be there cheering for you. Keep up the great work, my friend. Thank you very much, Colin. Have a great night, my man. You too, Vinny. Ciao. Take care. And that was Vinicius de Jesus. Vinny is such a great guy, isn't he, Adam? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Really, really, just a personable guy, a respectful guy, an amazing fighter. Like I said, I think his record shows as 9-2. and two. They don't have his CES fight yet up on SureDog, but they do have it on Tapology. So he did win that uh, title at uh, Welterweight at uh, CES, which is always on Access TV with our good friends Pat Militich and Ron Kruk. Uh, great organization, and uh, he, I will say, should be in the UFC uh, I would hope and think this year an amazing camp there training with uh, Safo Natal and uh, and Neiman Gracie and uh, and all the other people he mentioned over at uh, at team Henzo Gracie in New York and one other team uh, there as well and uh, man this is a really nice guy I uh, 
I, you know, I believe in our guests. We have a lot of talented people on here, uh, but uh, for someone that a lot of people don't know yet, uh, one of the very best fighters that people haven't seen yet in the UFC, although he has been in Bellator, but uh, one of the very best fighters that several people haven't seen yet, I will say is absolutely uh, Vinicius de Jesus, and I'm sure Adam oh, it, agree. It, it was just like he was talking about. He and his team are, are one of the hardest working teams out in, in mixed martial arts, and you can see that uh, uh, you know, they, he's got a lot of media behind him, uh, and it's because he's an exciting fighter, too. Yeah, yeah. He, he's both a good guy and an exciting fighter. I mean, what more can you ask for? Absolutely, and the guy who I brought up, uh, whose last name is Zaleski Dos Santos, in the UFC, I think is similar. Everyone's an individual, but uh, that guy's been killing it. That guy's, what, four fights in a row, I think, all stoppages, uh, and is, is, I think, probably top five now. Uh, well, actually, God, you 170 is such a is such a uh, murderer's row in the UFC, and so I'd say top eight, top nine, but uh, but maybe even get close to top five. I think Vinny is another version of, of him. Um, with, Absolutely, with I it. think he deserves a shot to get yeah. in there. Like everybody, I mean, he's keeping his plans open it sounds yeah. like yeah but uh ufc matchmakers please uh set up at least one fight contract yeah. the, the guy deserves it and you could probably shove him in there with the top 10 like colin saying yeah and, and have he'll, it work out he'll if he has to he'll do a short notice at 155 170 or 185 and uh really really amazing guy super talent and uh you know i think he's a guy also who will remain humble and respectful uh no matter how big a star he gets to be and i think he will definitely get to be one uh for sure but look out for uh vinicius de jesus he's coming he's going to be coming strong and he's going to make some serious noise so absolutely Vinny, thank you so much all respect to you uh and sorry for the late getting a hold of you thank you so much for taking the time late at night on the east coast well dr adam rorda we, we've we've got about seven minutes to roar at each other here or ten even um, <laughs> a little more than that if we wanted to we can keep going uh it, it's kind of a short night because we had a, a, a mishap there <laughs> with the interviews they would have gone full length for both of them but we hey it is what it is uh i i do want to give everybody a, a, a huge shout out that's tuning in right now i want to say thank you so much uh for giving us likes comments and shares that you have uh we have not tuned in or i can't see con can't see nobody else can see right now your guys's comments in studio uh we will be getting to you after the show but we do appreciate the comments and also the likes and shares it, it means the world we can't be doing this without you because of you guys we are making some improvements uh we're stepping up our game with cameras and a, a few other uh, pieces of equipment in the studio here such as new mics that'll be coming you, you hear some sound we sound a little different it's going to sound even better uh in, in the very near future so we uh, just need to say thank you so much if it wasn't for your guys' support we wouldn't be getting anywhere uh also all the fighters that are coming on, uh, and not just fighters, announcers, uh, refs, everybody that's a huge MMA fan, everybody that's been coming on has been a huge, huge help with getting us, being able to move forward with studio improvements, and we really are stepping up our game every single week for you guys. Uh, I have a few tricks up my sleeve coming up next week, and then the week after that, we've got a few uh, more additions. So just stay tuned with us every week as, as much as you can, and, and give us a like, comment, and share every episode. Absolutely. Thank and you. And thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Well stated, Dr. Adam Rorta. Really, really grateful and appreciative for all your efforts. Uh, you know, if you want to buy some shirts, that would, that would help. The shirts are great. Um, high quality uh, cross-trained MMA fighter and cross-trained fighter shirts. Uh, we also have some MMA power hour shirts. Um, one thing a lot of you may not know is that apparently it's a lot less expensive to send things from Europe here to the USA like t-shirts and then someone says they can send something it, it can get here quick for for six euros or, or ten euros that's really not the case here the only way it's going to be that cheap is if we send it and you get it two or three months later so do understand that if you want us to send you something from the USA to Europe like a t-shirt it's going to be equal to like 15 20 25 euros and that's just the reality of it we're not trying to take a profit on the shipping 
that's what it costs here in the United States. Yes, it sucks. But anyway, so if you want to, <laughs> if you want to sure understand that shipping is going to cost a little bit of money. But anyway, I'd uh, love to have you support the show and buy a shirt, MMA Power or Cross Trade Fighter. Let us know. Discounts will be uh, available if you want to ask for one. Just ask, as they say. Um, and he, he was just saying, Cross Trade MMA Fighter .com. You can just purchase them there, or you can send us a message. Those of you who are uh, connected to us, or uh, send MMA Power Hour. Uh, Facebook page a message and one of our team members will be able to get back to you real quick. Yes, or even hit me up with a cross train MMA fight cross train MMA fighter page. We got that. <laughs> and then uh, you know, um other than that, just a big thank you. All likes and shared are tremendous shares are tremendously appreciated. So some great fights coming up. May 4th card is coming up after the 27th card. Uh, for this uh, Bellator card, uh, we are going to be seeing uh, uh, John Fitch against Rory McDonald for Rory McDonald's 170-pound Bellator welterweight title. We're going to see smooth Benson I'm Henderson. I'm excited for that one yeah, going yeah. with uh, John Fitch. Fitch. I mean, yeah, yeah. he's just, he's one of my favorite fighters. He's a good friend of the show, too. I mean, yeah. what, what more can you ask for? Absolutely, and I just found out that if he wins at 41 years old, he will officially be the oldest Bellator world champion in the history of their organization. Oh, wow. How about that? That, I think, would be freaking awesome. I think he can do it. Interesting fight. I think we've got about five minutes left. Let me ask you, Adam. You're a wrestler from way back in high school. I'm a grappler from jiu-jitsu and striking. Didn't really have any experience in wrestling except for learning from some wrestlers that I grappled with. Um, John Fitch is, is the better wrestler than Rory. Granted, he's also a dozen years older, but he's a young 41, and I think Rory is kind of an old 29. Um Fitch needs to get this to the ground. Rory's a better striker, and Rory knows that Fitch needs to get it to the ground. But I know Fitch can still do it, just like Fitch's training partner, Habib Nurmagomedov. People know where he wants the fight to go, but he gets it there. What can the better wrestler do with someone else who's a pretty good wrestler and a better striker than him? You got to strike with him a little bit, but how long? And, and, and do you want to keep shooting? Do you want to throw a lot of feints? What would you say we want to see Fitch doing to be able to overcome uh, uh, another pretty good wrestler and a better striker with his superior wrestling? Focus on the wrestling. Just really uh, do it like you would in a regular, go about it like you would in a regular wrestling match, uh, not an MMA fight, but go at it more like you would in, in a wrestling match. It's going to be a lot about conditioning, and John is one of the best out there for that. Uh, it, it really shows, and I, I think in this case, that's the wise move, move for him, is just out wrestle him constantly, constantly throw in a strike when you can, but focus on that wrestling and make it a hard match. It's not going to be like a jiu-jitsu match where uh, – uh, it's more about a chess game. It, it's not. It's about wearing your opponent down in this case. I, I really feel that is more the reality that John Fitch has to face in this. And that's how I would go about it, is, is really bring my A wrestling game with most all focus there. And, yep. and just taking a, a strike whenever you get an opportunity, but focus on the wrestling. Yeah, makes sense. Iron sharpens iron. So the fact that he's training every week with Habib Nurmagomedov, or Khabib as some people say, um, uh, with uh, Daniel Cormier, and, and, and just amazing people uh, over there, I think, is just making him better and better. He's such an amazing veteran, a great talent. Um, he's been on a streak. I think he's won nine out of his last ten fights. Rory is, uh, is, is only uh, two for five and actually could have been one for five in his last five fights. However, um, it was all against really great opponents. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like Fitch on this. They're making him the dog by about three to one, but I think Fitch can definitely win this fight. It's a five round fight. It's a long fight. I think Fitch uh, has more experience with the, the distance than Rory does. Although Rory has been in some long, long fights. Um, Gonna be gonna be a grinding fight, but uh, I think Fitch just has to do his thing. Fitch is also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. A lot of you may not know, so I think if Fitch gets on top, you never know. He likes the ground and pound better, but if Rory wants to try to get really reckless and give him his back, we could see a submission from uh, Mr. Fitch, couldn't we? Uh, yeah, in reality, it, I, I think Fitch actually he. <laughs> He's definitely not the underdog, in my opinion. Just looking at it and, and looking back at past fights with Fitch, 
I don't consider him the underdog in this one. It, it, it's a good bet for me when it comes to Vegas. I, I, I'm, I've got money in on Fitch. So. I like it. Yeah, I think so too, and I think I will. I don't officially yet, but I think I will. Uh, love to see it, and uh, and you know, but uh, all respect to Rory, tough, tough guy. Um, also on the card, Liam McGeary against Phil Davis. Really, really good fight. Both former Bellator light heavyweight champions. Uh, Liam McGeary is doing some training with uh, one of my jujitsu instructors, Paulo Tiago, who's there with Fabiano Iha teaching us, and uh, and I think Liam is. Uh, is getting some really good training in and uh, is going to be uh, giving Phil Davis uh, all he can ask for. Phil Davis, uh, I think, did beat him uh, once before, so I do believe it's a rematch, but that's going to be an exciting fight. With the, and Let me ask you this, and, and before we close, Dr. Adam Morta, we know in the UFC that if you hold two titles, you're not going to be defending both titles because uh, you're going to be forced to give one up. Scott Coker, I think, said that when, uh, when Ryan Bader won the heavyweight tournament, uh, and therefore winning uh, or thereby winning the heavyweight uh, strap, that he will be allowed to hold both titles, I guess, as long as he defends them. So many people tell me that with Ryan Bader being, I think, in his mid-30s, he's, he's not so tall a fighter, but he's a thick fighter, and he's it's always been somewhat of a challenging cut to light heavyweight. Now he's at heavyweight which is perfect for him why would you want to go back to light heavyweight and do that to your body when you're the heavyweight champion of the world which is the more pre prestigious title and you're in your mid 30s so my feeling and from what i'm hearing from some pretty good uh, knowledgeable sources is that we're not going to see ryan bader uh trying to make 205 once again just like we're not going to see daniel cormier trying to make 205 uh once again is would you agree with that or do you think somehow that's uh, no i agree 100% with your assessment. Yeah. Uh, zero disagreement. <laughs> yeah. So then that that being the case, then someone will be fighting possibly for the vacant Bellator light heavyweight title. So this uh, this Liam McGeary against Phil Davis has some serious ramifications there. I think uh, Vadim Nemkov is in the picture uh, as well. And uh, and I don't who someone someone else is in there. Good. That's slipping my mind now. Uh, at light heavyweight, but I think that uh, Liam McGeary and Phil Davis are definitely a top five or six contender uh, fight. And, uh, and so I think this is going to be really exciting to see who wins this because whoever wins this may be fighting for the vacant Bellator light heavyweight title very soon or next uh other than that man i think it's about time to wrap it up before i do the usual wrap up dr adam Rorno, i'll give you the floor to sign off say whatever you'd like to say but i want to thank you so much for for getting this great studio looking as amazing as it does and uh we're going to be uh making it even better we're going to have people on a couch there's actually a couch here where our other studio wasn't really big enough to have a couch and so i'm looking at a couch and tables and cameras and lights so it's gonna look freaking awesome we're gonna have some in-person guests if not in the month of may then in the month of june for sure but i believe very possibly and likely in the month of may tell us a little bit about that and uh and anything else you'd like to do to uh, to say goodbye to the folks before i uh take us out of here the floor is yours as james lynch always <laughs> says i swore i wouldn't use that line all respect to you james lynch the floor is yours dr adorota so yeah, uh, actually, uh, the, the next things that we're bringing into the studio here is some nice sound treatment to really help things out. Uh, we're gonna be improving our mics, our, our headsets. You can kind of see a change here. Uh, there's just so many different things that we're, we're gonna be able to bring to the table. You brought up the couch. Uh, our, our graphics uh, behind Colin, you see something that we've been using for nearly 50 episodes. Not quite, but Good uh, yeah, pretty close. And, and we're, we're about time to move on to our next uh, virtual set. Uh, so our background will be changing, but it's actually a lot different than just your standard virtual set. Our, our cameras are improving as well. So uh, it's, 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 it's really exciting to be here where we're at right now and, and being able to make things Things happen again it, it, it it's all because of everybody liking commenting and sharing it, it, it really means the world to us but it, it really is what is 
making this show happen. We are a community of people. As you see, we've got a bunch of people bringing content to us. If you want to bring content to our show and you have an idea, uh, definitely submit it to us. Uh, give us an example of your work, uh, even if it's just with your cell phone and some uh, decent lighting that you, you have set up and a, and a mic uh, set up, a cheap one, even if it's $100. It's something that we may be able to use. Uh, I have a team of editors that can piece things together. So for all of you content creators that love MMA, send stuff to us and, and we won't use anything without your permission, but let us see what you have and we might be able to add it to our show. Uh, guests as well, yeah. I mean, we're gonna be able to bring them in studio, Colin. So there's nothing love more that. exciting than that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so other than that, just I, I have nothing to say other than we've got a bunch of exciting fights to check out. Uh, definitely don't go lose all your money in, in the fights this weekend or next weekend after that, but uh, uh, get involved. Watch them. Have some fun. Go to Buffalo Wild Wings with your f friends and go watch some UFC or go uh, w to wherever is playing Access TV because they always have fights on. Absolutely. Uh, so other than that, I'm out. I love y'all. Thank you so much, and thank you, Colin. My pleasure, Adam. Always appreciate your contribution. Next week, uh, we have Zach Cummings from the UFC, uh, welterweight contender, and he has a big fight coming up uh, in the next month. Zach Cummings will be here. We also have an amazing fighter about to be 62 years old, uh, fighting MMA, great condition, an amazing, amazing guy. Um, and uh, I just, uh, I, I, it's amazing to think for all of us that are way over 40 or over 45 or even over 50, uh, saying that we would maybe jump out there if someone gave us a chance. 0.1% of us do it, I think. And I think uh, Randy Franklin is uh, is that 0.1%. Big respect to him. Can't wait to talk to him on the show and have you guys see what an amazing, really, really cool uh, uh, man and warrior he is. So uh, with that, what I'm going to do is thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, I really want you, you all to take good care of yourself. Uh, it's no longer a cold winter, I guess, although it is in some places, but it's kind of a lonely world. Uh, be good. Reach out to your friends. Try to, try to bring some love and some peace and some happiness uh, to your friends, your family, your coworkers. It doesn't cost you anything to uh to be positive and give someone a kind word or help someone out um my dad used to say in times that i was down or, or depressed or discouraged go out and help people and i would sometimes think how the hell can i help people i don't feel like i have anything and you know he would say you know you have more than uh, you have more than you think and uh you know and you can still go out there and help people and that's what really uh is what we need a little bit more love makes the world go round right so uh Go do that. Be that guy. Be that girl. Spread the love, and uh, it'll come back to you tenfold. For Dr. Adam Rorda and our amazing staff in this fantastic new studio, I'm Colin Crandall, and uh, I'm tapping out. Well, welcome one. Welcome all to V3 Fight. This is exciting. The house is packed. Well, here we go. Knockout. Oh. Oh, oh. Pretty electric, man. People are on their feet. This is your main event. Wow. Let me hear you make I'm some noise. Here we go. Nice take down. Oh, wow. Now he's in a full mount. He's raining down elbows. Touch gloves. Look wow. at that. That's a nice takedown. Trying to finish here. Right over. Ladies and gentlemen, declaring your winner. It's staying undefeated. Everyone here just got to witness V3 history. I'm booking a private jet to Tuscany. You thought of me? Huh? I really need to get there fast. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Shut up, little boy. I'm talking to Fredo. Un poco di respect. Fredo. <laughs> Sorry, Al. There was someone disturbing us.
So I was telling you about Airwolf Jet Services. They're friends of ours. The best, amazing service. You should check them out now. www.airwolfjetservices.com Are you looking for a good fight? Check out the fight pay-per-view schedule. Watch on the biggest screen in the house. What's the fight tonight? MMA, boxing, pro wrestling, live on pay-per-view. Just tap play and pick a screen to watch on. Playback shifts instantly to the screen of your choice. No hardware, no hassle. Download the fight app and start watching today. A sport that bridges generations. Live everywhere. Fight gives you instant access to live pay-per-view and free combat sports programs. Check out our combat sports schedule at fight.tv. Fight. Start watching.